So the other day I got a chance to ride along in a F10 M5 and honestly, I was blown away. You see, I've been wanting to buy a modern M car. At the top of my list were both the F series M3 and the M2 competition. More so the M3 because of the added practicality for my family. And then I was introduced to the F10 M5 and I quickly forgot about the other choices. I was so excited that I went ahead and messaged Matt from Upset's Garage and I told him, I need to drive your M5. Well, here it is. And today I'm gonna review it. Huge thanks to Matt from Upsets Garage for allowing me to review this beauty. Ever dreamed of owning one of these? What if I told you you can have a shot at owning this exact one? Yep, Matt has actually given away his F10 M5 with over $30,000 in modifications away to one lucky winner. I'll leave a link in the description for more info on the giveaway. All right, so before I go drive the M5, I want to take you guys around and show you guys a little bit of the M5 and give you guys my first impressions. Obviously, as you can tell, this is not an OEM build. Um, this is a perfect example of what you call OE+, Plus, where it still looks original, but it has tasteful modifications to one, make it a little bit faster, look sportier and more aggressive. In other words, this is uh, an OG spec M5. Uh, let's start off with the most obvious thing on this M5 is the carbon fiber that's been added to the exterior. It's hard to miss. It looks really, really, really nice. This is the rear diffuser here. You got this very simple, but very nice carbon fiber trunk lip. It's not been overdone. Uh, the size is perfect in my opinion. It's not too big and it still helps maintain uh, the classy look of the M5. You got these carbon fiber mirror caps because why not? And of course, if you have a carbon fiber diffuser, lip and mirror, it's only right that you go with a very nice aggressive carbon fiber front splitter. This is probably one thing I'll be worried about later on when I drive this car, cause this car I do not believe has a lift up front and this sits pretty damn low. And you just have to appreciate because of what's going on with Bonner BMWs, the perfectly sized kidney grills that we have. Not too big, not too small, just right. I have these freaking awesome BMW adaptive LED lights. Of course, unlike the older previous generation BMWs, instead of the circle angel eyes, you kind of have the circle on the side and then the flat top and the flat bottom, but it does look super aggressive. And of course we have the comfort axis. All you need is the key fob with you and you just touch the handle, opens up the car, unfolds the mirror and you're ready to go. When you close it, it's pretty sweet. You don't have to close it all the way. You can do it gently. And then the rest happens by itself electronically, which completely seals the cabin. And if you wanna lock it right here, and that's it, closes the mirror. Very clean fender vent with the integrated side marker lights and of course the M5 badge. As you can tell, this is definitely not a stock system right here. Um, the wheels are much more flush than you would get them on a stock M5. I do believe that Matt added spacers in the front and the rear to give it that flush look and the final product is just freaking awesome. Especially with like the satin matte black paint on the wheels and a very interesting touch here, gold lug nuts kind of gives me a uh, jdm vibes i like it though it's a nice touch and of course when you're looking at the wheels it's very hard to ignore these massive discs and these massive brake calipers of course these are the optional carbon ceramic brakes the f10 m5 is a super sedan it's super powerful and of course you're gonna need some really good stopping power if you're gonna push this car to the limits i believe these are six pistons in the front and we have four pistons in the rear i cannot get over how good the color of the wheels look like i'm not sure if you guys can actually see it very well on video but in person they look phenomenal especially with the exterior paint i believe this is silverstone 2. the combination in general looks really really good here are a few more details about the m5 it's rocking the factory 20 inch m aluminum wheels wrapped in michelin pilot 4s tires measuring at 265 35 front and 295 30 rear when it comes to the suspension dining shines here dining adjustable coilover sleeves and new springs dining camber arms and a dining sway bar kit looking around the car you'll notice the black accents including my personal favorite the bmw logo it looks really cool under the hood is the lovely power plant, a 4.4 liter twin turbocharged V8 surrounded with a very good looking dining intake system. 
Of course, one of the benefits of owning an M5 is practicality. There's plenty of room inside. I'm gonna sit inside for the first time and give you guys my initial impressions. Um, I am about 5'11 height-wise, and I weigh about 190 pounds, just for reference. Oh yeah, plenty, plenty of room in here. Let me go ahead and scoot the seat back. Oh yeah, there's, there's more than enough room that you need in here. Yeah, it's a little bit too far. Um, so yeah, this is a, a really good car for those that are taller bigger and bone size. The seats are very nice. I think they're tailored more for comfortable instead of sportiness. But that said, there are controls down here to adjust the bolster if you want more of a snug fit, if you're going for a spirited drive. If there's one thing I've always wanted to try in a luxury vehicle are massaging seats. And guess what? The Sev 10 M5 comes equipped with massaging seats. So uh, I'm gonna give it a try. Okay, so I don't know how to turn on the massaging seats. I see the button, but nothing's happening. One sec. Okay, wait, so I don't know what happened, but the massage function kicked in and I can feel it working underneath my butt. I can definitely get used to this. Driving around while getting a massage, while going like 150 miles an hour. Oh yeah, this is a win. There's something interesting going on though. The massage portion only happens on your butt but I haven't felt really anything on the back, which is really odd, and I couldn't find anything in the menu to adjust that, so, uh, weird. But yeah, plenty of room. You have um, all the controls on the seats to adjust pretty much any position that you like, up, down, front, back, lumbar support, and bolster setting as well. As far as the rear seats go, uh, for somebody my size, uh, given the fact that the seats were pushed back just a bit, uh, yeah, there's plenty, plenty of room right here. Yeah, it's definitely not a tight squeeze. I mean, that's what you would expect from a, from a 5 Series BMW. And of course, you got the dual entertainment screens back here to keep the kids occupied. You got the controls back here for heated seats, and we have dual zone climate control as well, which is pretty sweet. When it comes to cargo space, um, there's more than enough room back there. I feel, I feel like it could fit like two or, or three freaking adult bodies back here. Not something that you should do, but uh, just so you can kind of get a bit. You know what? Never mind. By the way, this is a pretty big bag. It might not look like it on video, but it is pretty big. And it only takes up about 10 to 15% of the trunk. And there's plenty of space left here. There's plenty of room for groceries, plenty of room for golf bags. Yeah, this is massive. And you don't have to worry about cargo space when you own an F10 M5. You got a little netted area here to, I guess, keep some stuff from flying around. And you have a little bin right here as well. And the best part is you can just close uh, the trunk from the key fob. That's it. All right, let's do this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, let's go. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it on automatic mode for now, and then later on I'll switch it to manual mode and use the paddle shifters to go through the gears. All right, so it looks like by default, the steering setting is on comfort. The suspension setting is on comfort as well, and the drivetrain setting overall is on efficient mode, which I find very funny because this is a twin turbocharged V8 monster. Efficient? Eh, not really but I'm sure that mode helps just a tad bit. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. The ride quality is very, very smooth. I wasn't expecting that on the lowered vehicle, but it rides very nice. The road I'm driving on right now has a few imperfections and the suspension is taking really good care of it. Like I said earlier, I got to ride along in the F10 M5. It was a stock one, so it had stock height and everything. And comparing that ride quality to this one, it's pretty much identical. I can't tell the difference gotta love the Dyna suspension setup. Uh, it just kind of gives you the best of both worlds. It lowers the car, removes the fender gap, and at the same time still gives you an OEM-like ride quality. That's freaking amazing. Essentially, you get these coilover sleeves that go over the OEM strut, and from there you can adjust the ride height while still keeping the adaptive suspension and the OEM struts. Gotta love it. I absolutely love this Alcantara steering wheel. Um, I believe it's from M Performance. It's a very nice touch. Um, Matt did a really good job with this upgrade because it makes all the difference in the world. It's really nice to hold. It's very grippy. 
Uh, if you guys haven't upgraded your steering wheel on the BMW, I so suggest you do because it changes the driving experience. I just don't know how to explain it. It just adds a different feel to things, you know, since you're, that's the one thing that you're physically touching when you're driving a car. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it into manual mode. Downshift to fifth gear. Oh yeah. Yeah, those shifts are very fast. And I believe it's not even on the fastest setting for the, for shifting. I think it's on setting number two, which is, uh, I guess, like a good midpoint between comfort and aggressiveness. Yeah, the downshifts are very, very fast. And they're not too intrusive, neither. You can barely feel them. Did you guys hear that? I'm going to go ahead and put the shifts on setting one to see if I can explain to you guys the difference. And maybe you'd be able to hear it as well. I'm not sure if you guys would be able to hear that through video, but I'll try to demonstrate here. So I'm currently on third gear on setting number one. Watch, I'm gonna go to fourth gear and then fifth gear, see if you guys can hear it. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's a noticeable delay between the shifts. It prioritizes comfort over aggressiveness. So if you're looking to daily drive and you're not really going for a spirited drive, then you might wanna keep it on setting number one. All right, I'm gonna put it on set in two, do the same thing. Yeah, much faster, much faster, less delay in between shifts. That's like a happy medium. I'm gonna go ahead and try it on the third setting. I have not tried that one yet. All right, let's see how crazy these shifts are with the third setting. Okay, much more aggressive, that's for sure. And you can actually feel the shifts. It goes real fast, but you can feel um, like a small bump, like a little tiny bump. Unlike the PDK transmission when I reviewed the Porsche GT3 RS where you couldn't feel it at all. Um, I could definitely feel them on these. Uh, it's a little more aggressive. Uh, but of course, if you wanna catch speed and get the best lap records or the best drag times, that's the setting you wanna have it at. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the suspension set on Sport Plus and the drivetrain mode on sports plus as well oh yeah you felt a noticeable amount of uh how do you call it responsiveness like the pedal the gas pedal is much more touchier now the steering i'm going to keep it on sport instead of sport plus um, i didn't really like sport plus too much on the m4 um, i guess it really benefits only if you're going really really fast uh, so you can have that precise steering. But yeah, I'll keep it on Sport, suspension on Sport Plus, and the drivetrain on Sport Plus as well. All right, so I got a little bit of a straightaway. I'm currently on gear number three. Let's see what she got. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is some serious freaking torque right there. Oh my God. Uh, round two. Oh my God, and just like that, 100 miles per hour. That is very, very fast. And you get that boost of torque like immediately my god so i'm not sure exactly how much horsepower this m5 is producing i just know that matt told me he's running aftermarket high flow down pipes and i think an active auto works tune so this car may be pushing like 620 horsepower to the wheel or more i'm not entirely sure and i'm not sure he's taking this car to the dyno to verify but i can tell you guys this is very fast um like scary fast <laughs> Like I told you guys, this is like the best of both worlds. You got the comfort, the room for the family. And if you wanna hit it, this car is more than capable. Uh, just a few little details. This is a 2016 BMW M5 with the competition pack. I believe this is the last year of the F10 body style and then the F90 came out afterwards. The M5 with the competition pack pushes a little bit more power, 575 horsepower crank and I believe 500 pound-feet of torque. But I've read from various sources that that's very underrated by BMW. 
and that these cars could be making well over 575 to the wheel not crank so take the 575 with a grain of salt it's probably more powerful than that i really like the interior it's very 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 roomy very comfortable um as far as aesthetics go if you've seen one bmw interior you kind of seen them all uh the m51 is a little bit different the infotainment display is really nice uh the trim i think this is like a dark wood trim with the aluminum uh border it's pretty cool not a big fan of the dashboard material like the top portion it's almost like this uh plastic rubbery feel not a big fan of that especially for a car that retailed for like 100 grand i would like that to be more soft touch or leather or something like that actually talking about leather i think matt did tell me that this m5 has all the packages except the extended leather or something like that i guess it doesn't have complete 100 percent leather all the way around so uh, maybe that's why the dashboard is like that who knows all right we got some turns oh yeah yeah, it feels planted around the turns. You feel very uh, confident. You don't feel like you're gonna just completely start drifting off to the side. Oh my God, the torque this car provides is unfreaking real. It's very, very addicting as well. This is a car that can really get you into trouble. Like I just wanna do it again. The freaking acceleration is like borderline scary on this car like it's fun as well but obviously you don't want to do this on public roads you want to take it to the track but uh holy crap i don't even know how to explain it you floor it on like third or fourth gear at like 2500 or 3000 rpm it just pushes you back like you lose all the air in your stomach oh my god can't explain it i got to turn right here oh the downshifts are instant very very fast pulling out It just never gets old it never gets old i'm sure you guys noticed already uh the sound that is making when i accelerate of course bmw likes to plug in their voodoo sounds inside of the cabin so it sounds more aggressive you know since the cabin is sealed to kind of keep you isolated from the environment they have to kind of pipe in some fake noise to make it sound good but i think a lot of the sound you guys are hearing right now is actually from the dining exhaust axle back that matt installed to this car it's not overly aggressive. You can still daily drive it. There's no drone or anything like that. But when you hammer the gas, it's a very, very deep sound. It sounds very good. Here, I'll show you guys some exhaust sound clips. The interior in the M5 is definitely one of the strong points, especially if you have it equipped right. The front seats are good in all scenarios, whether it's for long rides, tight corners, the adjustability on them are pretty much endless. The large integrated infotainment display is clear, very responsive, and pretty easy to navigate once you get used to BMW's iDrive system. You can either turn, press, or draw on a circular dial to easily control the display, or you can just use your speech. The steering wheel has been upgraded to an Alcantara and Performance one, and the paddle shifters were upgraded as well to larger, bigger metal ones. Both of those things combined really does enhance the driving experience. The 6F2 banging offset sound system was definitely one of my favorite parts about driving an M5, off camera of course. That's one of the options I really recommend as a must have, especially if you're into music. So I've driven in a few cars that have a heads up display, but I gotta say the one here on the M5 is super, super clear definitely looks high quality i like that next to the speed you can see uh the speed limit on the current road that you're driving in that's pretty cool you know it's funny now that i'm talking about it, i i noticed the heads up display much more i've been looking at the gauge cluster all along because that's all i'm used to over the years but yeah the heads up display is pretty cool it keeps your eyes in the right direction which is on the front windshield got some more turns oh yes
Yeah, it stays very well planted. Sticks right to the road. Yeah, I mean, you got to give props to those Michelin Pilot 4S tires that it has on. Those are really sticky, really, really good summer tires. You got to give it to BMW. They've come a very long way with the M5. Like, this is a very heavy car. I think it's like 4,400 pounds or so. And it handles like any other sports car, which is crazy. They've done such a good job distributing the weight. Got to give props to those guys at BMW. All right, so this is the straightest straightaway I'm probably going to get all day today. So uh, let's do this. <laughs> oh my god hey guys this is the ultimate driving machine right here oh my god i'm not even gonna lie once i get home pop open the laptop go straight to auto tempest and start looking for a f10 bmw m5 my god this is freaking awesome yeah this car can get you in trouble very fast which probably explains why matt has <laughs> this high-tech radar detector here uh because you're probably gonna need it. The carbon ceramic brakes on this car are freaking unreal. They slow you down like instantly if you wanted to um, once you're going high speeds. Now they do make like these weird squeaks every once in a while when you're cruising around, something that I noticed. Uh, but when it comes to braking performance, there's nothing like carbon ceramic brakes, that's for sure. Oh yeah, and I forgot to talk about one thing. Uh, the F10 and 5 actually comes available in a six speed manual, guys, which is freaking awesome. You know, for the F90 2017 and up, which is the newer model, they discontinued the manual transmission on the M5, which is sad. But for this one, you can actually get it. I mean, think about all that power on a six-speed manual. That would have to be freaking insane. It's probably not the ideal situation, but if you want to have more engagement and have more fun while you're driving, that would be pretty cool. But pretty freaking nuts, too. <laughs> You know what, if I was to purchase an F10 M5, I would have a really hard time deciding which transmission I wanna go with. Either the six speed traditional manual or the seven speed dual clutch transmission. The reason it would be tough is because ideally I'd want that car as a daily driver, something that's fun and comfortable for the family, a car that my wife could drive if she wanted to every once in a while. And you know, nobody wants to be stuck in daily traffic with a six speed manual, it's just not fun. And I absolutely love a traditional manual gearbox, especially um, as a weekend car, if you're going out to have fun. But as a daily driver, let's say you just wanna put it on automatic mode and not really think too much, not use the clutch, not shift any gears. Well, then the dual clutch transmission gives you the best of both worlds. You can go into manual mode and shift the gears at lightning speed, or you can just put it on fully automatic mode and let the car do all the shifting for you. So, so see myself owning one of these. This car is freaking fantastic. I mean, what is there not to like? You get supercar performance. It's uh, very practical, plenty of space for the family, groceries, cargo. It handles very well. The car looks absolutely stunning. It's fun to drive, like very, very fun to drive. And in my opinion, I think this car is gonna age very well. It's gonna look just as good, like eight years down the road as it does now, honestly. Oh, this is a very nice touch. I didn't even notice. There's like the suede material on the side pillars here and on the liner. That's pretty cool. Of course, there's a sunroof that I have not used the entire day that I've been reviewing this car. But uh, yeah, it's there. I don't know, guys. I'm right there at the fence. I'm liking this car. It makes me feel good. It's very fun. Has tons of tuning potential. It's great for the family, very practical. It just makes sense. It's also BMW fits in with my YouTube channel very well. I might have to get one of these pretty soon. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. Crazy that a month ago I wasn't even thinking about an M5. But ever since I got that one experience and now I get to drive this one, sold.